I feel like for an art historian, it's probably as wild as it gets. <laughs> My name is Amara Solari. I am professor of art history here at Penn State. When I was 13, my parents piled us into a VW bus, and we spent the summer driving around the Yucatan Peninsula. My second year of graduate school, I really, really fell in love with indigenous history. Then I learned that this place I had loved as a child really was the perfect place to do research. The Maya villages that were put together in the 16th century are still Maya villages functioning in the 21st century. Very little has changed. My team and I were awarded one of the biggest grants humanists can actually get. So we just rent a car and we go village to village to village to village. We went to dozens of different little churches, literally just looking for anything on the walls. When you look at a wall inside one of these churches, frequently you will see plaster starting to peel off the wall. And if you really look closely, you might see little flecks of color. And so we know immediately there's another artifact that's revealed that needs to be studied and fit into this larger puzzle. Our big trip was scheduled for March 2020. And then the whole world started to fall apart. It was actually our Mexican colleagues who kind of said, you guys probably need to go home. I never thought the bulk of my research monies would be spent in a materials characterization lab. The results completely changed the course of my research. The Materials Characterization Lab works on anything and everything under the sun, but we don't often get the opportunity to work on art history. Maya blue, of all of the colors of the Maya artist palette, is the most significant. To make the pigment, you have to procure indigo dye and then a really slimy clay that's called paligorskite. Paligorskite is positive proof that the pigment that was used is Maya blue. Luckily, during those first two research trips, we had taken a lot of samples, little tiny flecks of paint off the wall. When we started looking at the samples that Mara brought to us, we had a few roadblocks. The majority of the sample was the plaster backing that was behind the paint. You have to travel to get paleorskite. In the colonial period, Maya peoples were not allowed to leave their villages to do trading or mining. They really are risking their bodies to procure the ingredients of this pigment, which says to me, this pigment is not just a color, right? There's a whole philosophy, theology, religious system behind using this particular color. Paligorskite has particular peaks in the X-ray diffraction pattern. I call it a hunt and peck mission because we often had to look in quite a few spots. We put a lot of time and effort in um, and we didn't find it at first. She showed us, you know, these crazy looking graphs, right? And she says, look, that peak, that peak right there, that's Paligorskite. And immediately I just like, what? And I was like, ooh, we're doing science now. <laughs> <laughs> there were audible cheers in the lab that day. As soon as we figured out that Maya Blue was being used, it opened up a completely novel avenue of inquiry. The murals seem on the surface to be purely European, but because of the scientific angle, we know that they're painted with pigments that are inherently important to indigenous religiosities. The Maya are actively informing the religious system that will become Mexican Catholicism. Working with Nicole was great. They were so excited about the project. It just shows you at Penn State, it's the perfect place to do research because no matter what you're interested in, there's always going to be a resident expert who can help you. It is such a privilege to have a job, I'm gonna tear up a little bit, but to have a job at a place like Penn State. If you can dream it at Penn State, it can become a reality. Everything's possible here. <laughs>